Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. In your game, you're probably going to have some text that you want to put onto the screen at one point or another. You can see here that I've got four different texts. Hello, hello, hello world, and hello. Now, each one of these is actually being drawn by a different draw text function because GameMaker has a good handful of them. I'm going to break down which ones I'm using, how to use them, and a little trick to get small text that doesn't look pixelated anywhere you want with just using one other function besides the basic draw text. Let's break that down. So in my game, I've got two fonts, a small font, which is using size 12, and a large font, which is using size 30. And then I just have one object in my room and a camera that is size 240 by 135 on this object. Let's break down the functions that I'm using in here. The first couple functions that I have here are for aligning text. And this is not specifically drawing the text, this is actually drawing it where you want it to go. So there's an H align for horizontal, V align for vertical, and three different constants that you can pass into each of these. So this is drawing it exactly in the center. But if we wanted to draw our text anywhere else, you can see here that you can do it on the left, center, and right, and then the same thing for the vertical drawing, top, middle, and bottom. So it allows you to draw your text where you want, especially like in a text box. It helps to know exactly where it's starting so you can calculate the distance. So those are two really handy and useful functions. The next thing I'm doing is I'm setting my font right here to font large. You use the function draw set font, and then it sets that font. Now, a very important thing to note is that when you're drawing text in your game, that text setting, such as H-align, V-align, and font, changes all of the other text inside of your game. So if you're drawing it in two different spots and you only call draw set font large in one place, as soon as you call it, all the text is going to be large. All the text will be center and middle and whatever it is you set. So that means every single time you want to draw something in your game, be sure to set each of these properties the way you want it on that specific text. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues. Now, the first drawing function I actually want to look at is this one. This is the most basic. It is just draw text. You give it an X, a Y, and then the text you want to draw. So if we look at this, this is going to be the second one inside of here. And this text is actually going to come out kind of pixelated. You can see it right here. And if we change the font, you can actually see it a lot more. This vector font is actually really, really nice. But if we come in and we change it to the default Arial, you can see here that the small fonts here, which all three of these are, now look really, really pixelated, which is not great. But there are a lot of times you want to draw small text in your game, but you want it to look good, not like this. If you want it to look like that, then you're all set. Otherwise, you need to come in and there's a little trick you can do. Instead of saying draw text, you can do draw text transformed with a larger font. So transformed changes the scale of the font. And when you change the scale of a font both larger and smaller with code and other forms of scaling just through code, not actually changing the text or the image itself, it looks significantly better. So we have this font large, let's go into that and let's change it to Arial, just like we had in the other one. And if I run this, you'll be able to see very clearly that this is a smaller font than the second one, and yet it's not pixelated. Because it is a much larger font by default at size 30, but in our object, we're actually transforming that text to just 25% of its original scale. If we were to change these to the one, which would be the full scale of this font, it would be that large. And you can see the difference between those. So drawing large text scaled down looks much, much better. This is a way to have crisp, clear font even at very small sizes. And the last argument on this is the angle, which I normally leave at zero, but if you wanted to change the angle, you could draw text at an angle. Kind of weird, but there are times I'm sure you probably want to do that. So there you go. Now you know how. 
Now the next one down here is draw text ext, which stands for extended. And this is a function you're probably going to use a lot when it comes to dialog boxes or anything of that nature. And that's because extended allows you to draw a long piece of text over multiple lines and you set how long that text is allowed to go before it breaks and how much of a separation there is between those lines of text. So I'm actually going to comment this last one out. I'll add some more text here and you'll see that it actually, and you can see here that it stretches it to its bounds of 200 pixels and then it moves that text down. And if I copied this again, we can draw even more text on here. You can have as lengthy of a string inside of here that you want, and it's going to draw it just as you would expect. So the separation here isn't really that great. I might bump that up to 20. So this is the separation between the lines, and you can see there that now there's a lot more separation between them. It looks really good. You can imagine a box over this for dialogue or choices or mission context or whatever, but draw text ext is how you do that. I've got several tutorials on my channel that cover that, how to do in-depth dialogue systems, and you use this function a lot to calculate exactly how wide and how tall this is going to be based on this. And lastly, I'm going to comment this one out because it's so long now. Let's uncomment the color. So we have the ability to draw text in color. Now you see here that I have four different colors here, and that's because you can blend colors and you can have them be a gradient or you can have each corner be a different color that comes into the center and all bleeds together. If we do all one color, the text is just that one color, like so. If we were to come in here and say, see red for the second or the third and fourth one, then we would get a purplish gradient in the middle there with red and blue. So you can see that you can change the color of your text. The last argument here is for alpha. So if you wanted this to be half transparent, you could put that at a value less than one, and then all of a sudden you have transparent text as well. And that's how you do colored text. And when you understand the basics of all of these, you can come in and just type out draw text and see all the options they have because you can actually combine these all the way to draw text uh, extended transformed color. So you can put all of these together in the one function they have right here. If you wanted to draw your text over multiple lines with color at a different scale, angle, and transparency. It all comes down to this one function, or you can break it down, depending on your needs, into separate functions if you're drawing something that's smaller and easier and simpler. But this function, you need to know how the rest of them work, and then you can pass in all the arguments right here. And that's a breakdown of the basic drawing and how to get text onto your screen. If you want to do more advanced things, like having text change color in the middle of a sentence, if you want to have text moving around, that is all stuff that you can do in Game Maker, but it is definitely on the much more advanced side, because that involves using a lot of these functions for different parts of the same string and changing the Y coordinate and the colors as you go along. But this is the base. If you understand these functions and how they work, then you can put this all together to build your own custom dialogue, text showing system, whatever it is you want, in whatever way you want, with whatever colors you want, and whatever animations you want in there. But I hope that was helpful, and as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as one dollar a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.